Okay, uh, welcome uh, uh, Hannah, welcome uh, Lily again, and uh, okay, that's the rest I already welcome already. Okay, great. Uh, Sarah also. Hi, Sarah. Okay. Uh, hi, Jacqueline. <laughs> okay. So okay, we are uh, uh, back again for this uh, fourth time. We 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 uh, learning about the three ways to bring heaven on earth. Actually, this this whole set teaching is actually about the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. Uh, we talk about repentance, and uh, we must shut doors the enemy, the, the defeated enemy, and uh, and we must preach about the kingdom of heaven is here, here. Okay, it's not. In the future is now okay so we, we when we share this gospel of the kingdom uh many souls will be interested and they will be drawn because like the days of jesus when he preached the gospel of the kingdom thousands will listen to him and a lot of them don't understand about the mystery of the kingdom jesus always talk 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 nothing but the kingdom about the kingdom parables and parables of, of the about the kingdom and some of them don't quite understand Okay, but those who understand will come by the thousands and they will listen and then everyone get healed. Okay, so when you understand, you understand, you must understand. Okay, like the Matthew chapter 13 and Mark chapter 4 talk about the four kinds of soil. If you can understand, then it works. And you must have the, your, it cannot be the second kind of soil, means shallow soil. You must understand and you must really believe you are not shakable. Not, not like the second kind of soil, no roots, okay, and the kingdom of God will manifest, okay, you, uh, if you are the fourth kind of soil, okay, so, and here I am is to explain to you clearly what Jesus teach, I'm not teaching my own uh, new doctrines, okay, I'm teaching exactly what Jesus taught, faith, anointing, and the presence, okay, I'm quoting from him, okay, how to bring heaven on earth now. So last few weeks, I hope you all have watched, uh, uh, you have watched my, uh, uh, okay, last few weeks, you have watched my, uh, uh, maybe I put myself on uh, spotlight for everyone. Okay, I think this is better, spotlight for everyone, so you can see me. Uh, yeah. So last few weeks, I taught about mostly about the uh, uh, walking in the spirit how how to operate in the spirit practically okay what do you mean by in the spirit walking in the spirit why is it so important okay because in the next half i'm going to talk about the presence if you don't walk in the spirit and you cannot tell the difference then it's difficult to host the presence because presence and anointing is different Presence, you need to be very holy, okay? You need to be operating in the spirit, not in the flesh. And you need to have intimacy, okay? You need to operate in the spirit, your spirit, not your soul, not your body, okay? So so that's why I spend a lot of time uh, very slowly explain about uh, what what do you mean by operate in the spirit? Romans 8.5 uh, yielding your mind to the things of the Spirit. Uh, you should be like Jesus. Jesus is always conscious of the Holy Spirit upon him. And so when somebody touch him with faith, the woman of if issue of blood touch him with faith that he's that that she will get healed. And and Jesus felt the power upon him left and the woman was healed. Jesus can sense the power. There's a power. There's a there's a power anointing of the Holy Spirit upon him. Likewise, you should be doing that. You should be able to be conscious of the anointing, the power that is upon you. Okay. And you can do that easily by operating your spiritual senses to sense the, 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 the Holy Spirit upon you. Okay. And and if, when you are in the when you're driving, you when you're going anywhere, you should be uh, like you know praying in tongues under your breath. That is called top up, top up tongue, top up, topping up. You should do your prayer one hour at least at home. So when you go outside, you maintain yourself in the spirit by uh, praying in tongues under your breath. Nobody knows you're praying in tongue. 
Okay, this is called top up tongue. You are, when you do that, you are constantly stirring up the gift of the Holy Spirit. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, stir up the gift of the Holy Spirit that was imparted to you through the laying of hands. So you can, you can always pray in tongues everywhere to stir up the gifts. The gifts, the Holy Spirit gifts, gifts of healing, gifts of prophecy, gifts of words of wisdom, gifts of miracles, gifts of uh, uh, so many gifts, nine gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 onwards, talk about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. You need to stir them up. You need to stir them up. It is not automatic. Okay? You need to keep yourself in the Spirit, praying under, praying in tongues under, under your breath. And, and you must understand what do you mean by uh, operating from the Spirit. Romans 8, 5. Okay? And, and Jesus was conscious of the presence. When the presence left him, uh, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He, the presence of, of the Father left Jesus because he, he took over our sin, divine exchange. And he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was always conscious of the presence. You and me should be doing that. Always conscious of the presence. Don't be looking around for... Some people, they are in the spirit, but in the wrong way. Because when in the previous religion, they, are, they practice new age. They practice certain religion that, that activate their spirit, their human spirit, to, to partner with evil spirit. They, they call for evil uh, forces, power from outside to come in. And your, their spirit can feel that power coming in. They activate their spiritual senses in the wrong way. And then they have, they have become very sensitive to the evil demonic realm, the evil spirit around them. That is wrong. If you have this problem, we, you can text me privately and, and maybe I can help you. We should not be sensing evil spirit everywhere. Your spirit should be sensing the presence of the Father in you constantly, just like Jesus. We model after Jesus. Okay? We should be op operating our spirit and yielding our mind to the things of the spirit, Romans 8, 5. To see, to hear visions from Him. And sometimes we, 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 tell, we remind ourselves, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do. Even though you're very smart, very experienced in your job, you tell Holy Spirit, I don't know how to solve this problem. You are, you are full of wisdom, Holy Spirit. You, you, you teach me. You teach me, you guide me, and then you pray in tongues. And suddenly, Holy Spirit gives you a, a revelation, a creative way to solve this problem, a breakthrough. And then your boss will be amazed. Wow, how come you are so brilliant? How can, how can you come up with such a brilliant idea? You know how? How come? Because you pray in tongues. And then you tell Holy Spirit, I don't know how. Even though you have 20 years experience in this job, you tell Holy Spirit, I don't know how. You, 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 you humble yourself. So that when you humble yourself by telling Holy Spirit you don't know how, and then you pray in time and you yield your intellect, your thoughts, your, your imagination, suddenly you, the Holy Spirit show you a new idea, a breakthrough idea, an a, a idea that's so full of creativity and wisdom that it shocked you. So that's, how, that's why praying in tongues is so important. And we call this pro, uh, uh, prophetic intercession. Okay. You have an open heaven in your belly. The Holy Spirit is your open heaven. You are actually seated in third heaven at the same in Christ. Seated in third heaven in Christ at the same time you are sitting in your room now. You are in two places. Jesus is in third heaven at the same time he is inside your belly. You understand? These things are happening right now. Jesus is in third heaven at the same time he is in your belly with your with your spirit inside your spirit and you are, you are in this room at the same time you are in third heaven okay you are, you are joined here with Jesus okay you are you are one one spirit with Jesus you cannot leave him you leave him you die Jesus is a branch Jesus is a vine and you are the branch you you cannot be separated Somebody asked, how do you pray in tongues under your breath? Pray in tongues quietly under your breath. 
Okay, when you pray in tongues, you always pray. Uh, you want to pray under your breath. You can pray in such a way that you can hear, but other people cannot hear. There has to be a little bit of sound. Okay, there has to be a little bit of sound only for you to hear only. Okay, if you are totally quiet, ah, uh, you 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 cannot pray in tongue with your mind. You have to be from from your mouth. The whole, because the Bible says the Holy Spirit give you utterance when when you pray in the spirit. When you pray in in the spirit, it has to be uh, uh, vocal. Okay, when it's vocal, when it's vocal, that means sometimes the Holy Spirit use your mouth to release decree. Decree means command. Command that you 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 don't know how to command because you don't understand what's happening, but the Holy Spirit will use your mouth. Why why the Holy Spirit must use your mouth? Because this world is created for us. In Genesis one twenty six, God gave dominion to men. God cannot say, "I'm sorry, I take back." Dominion has been given to us. That means God want to partner us. You exercise dominion. God release the power. If you don't open your mouth to decree. To exercise dominion, God cannot help you. God cannot say sorry, sorry. I change my mind. I take back this dominion. So you have to pray vo vocally. Uh, uh, vocally, it must be vocal, very softly, and 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 the Holy Spirit will give you utterance, will lead you, guide you to to make a uh, uh, decree. You know, in in heavenly language that you may not understand. You know, so praying tongues is 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 actually uh, releasing one of the ways to release the open heaven that every one of us already have. So why why would we want to shortchange ourselves and and don't release that open heaven? Okay, so now we 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 going to move on to the next new topic, a uh, new type of prayer. Which is called uh, ministering to the Lord, okay? And this ministering to the Lord is is the most powerful, the most most powerful way to pray, okay? Then compared to uh, to uh, the first two that I taught you, prophetic intercession and soaking prayer is more powerful, okay? Okay, I hope you can see the PowerPoint. Uh, uh, I hope you can see the PowerPoint. Okay, let me start the slideshow. So this is the third kind of prayer that I'm, I was talking to you about, and and in the Old Testament, the 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 prophets, the priests, they do that minister to the Lord. They minister to the Lord. Okay, and 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 when after they minister the Lord, the Lord reply, answered back. To to Samuel. Okay. And then in the in the uh, one Chronicles sixteen thirty seven, King David set up the Ark of Covenant. Uh, uh, this is called the Tabernacle of David. The Tabernacle of David. There is no holy of holy. There is no holy of holy. You can just stand in front of the ark. You know you don't need to make sacrifice, then you can go to the holy of holy. You understand? That is the tabernacle of David. So, so in the new covenant, in the new covenant, God, we are actually temple of God, and we are actually a uh, 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 temple of God. And God wants us to become tabernacle of David. It's written in Acts fifteen, chapter Acts chapter fifteen, verse sixteen. God wants every one of us to become. Tabernacle of David, so that there's there will be a revival. If you read the the verse X chapter fifteen verse sixteen and seventeen, it talk about uh, God wants to restore back this one Chronicle sixteen thirty seven. He wants to restore back this this uh, a tabernacle of David, which is broken down, so that so that all the Gentiles will come to the Lord. All the Gentiles will come to the Lord. God want to restore this tabernacle of David. So what is this this uh, tabernacle of David? What is this 
minister to Lord. What does it mean? It means giving thanks, giving praise. It's like talking to God. Thanks and praise. Okay? So it's different from the first two prayers that I taught you. Soaking prayer, prophetic intercession is different. And, and in the New Testament, Acts chapter 13 verse 2, they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And then the Holy Ghost speak, said. Okay? So ministering to a Lord always end up with something happening. God always talk to you. God always speak to you. You know. You see here? I will rebuild. After this, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. This is a new covenant. Huh? I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things. So, God is saying that He wants revival. He wants all the Gentile, the rest of mankind, to seek Him. To seek Him. He wants revival. And that revival will come when you rebuild the tabernacle of David. You understand? So it is very important, it's very key that we understand and we all of us becomes the tabernacle of David. Okay? So ministering to a lot. If you read the old, what I show you just now, the scriptures, ministering to a lot is actually restoring the tabernacle of David. It is the key to the glory realm. Okay? It's the key to the glory realm. The glory of God comes when we minister to the Lord. The glory of God is actually the presence of, of God or presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus will, will appear. Okay? Just like the miracle of David. The ark, the presence of Jesus, the presence of God is above the ark. Okay? And the, the Levites are ministering to the presence, talking to God, talking to Him. Okay? And, and what happened when they talk to Him? The tab once what happened when they, they set up the tabernacle of David in the days of, of uh, Hezekiah, in the days of King David? The glory of God surround the whole Israel, you know. Not just the king, you know. Not just the, 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 the palace, you know. The whole Israel is protected by the glory of God. And Israel became the most powerful nation in the world. The most powerful. All the enemies of Israel become weak and poor. And those who bless Israel will be blessed. The nation of Israel was the, the, the territory was the biggest and most powerful. The, nation, the country was the most powerful because of the glory of God. And likewise, it is, it's the same for us. If you can become tabernacle of David in your home, in your family, if you were to set up a tabernacle of David in your family, you will understand all this and then you set it up in your family. The glory of God will become your protection. Okay? So, so how do you minister to the Lord? You can minister to the Lord with the Word, reading the Bible and talking to Him. Uh, later, I will give you more details. Okay? Uh, each of them, I will give you more details. You can dance in the Spirit, prophetic dance. Be led by the Spirit of God when you dance. Like what I showed you last week, the, the video, the, the what we do we did in the outdoor worship, with flag, with colorful flag. Uh, and we sing in the Spirit. We sing new songs in the Spirit spontaneously. That means the lyrics are brand new, download from heaven. We sing uh, 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 new lyrics with the music, with the music, okay? Or we sing in tongues. We sing in tongues, okay? Number two, that's number two. Or number three, we can minister to Him with the seven pillars of faith in His love. The whole Bible 
cover to cover. It's talking about faith in God's love. The reason why we read the Bible is not to give you fear. Or fear that God will punish us if we don't if we sin. He's waiting to whack you or put you to hell. Uh, you are you are you are trying to be holy and righteous because God is a is a very uh uh, uh what I call that a very uh angry judge. No, 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 no. You got the, got it wrong. If you think like that, you're wrong. Okay, that means you will have no faith. Okay. You read the Bible to understand the depth and the height and the width of the love of Yeshua for you. Okay? If you cannot discover the love of Yeshua from Old Testament to New Testament, that means you need to attend my course, my, my, my topic. That's, I'm going to teach one topic on seven pillars, seven principles of Bible interpretation. Seven principles of Bible interpretation. Then you will understand. Okay, everything is about the love of Father God for you and me, His beloved. We are His beloved children. Okay, you can see you can see so many things in the Old Testament. God asked us the Joshua kill all the children, kill all the women in the Promised Land. You thought that God was in the Old Testament. God is a very uh, angry, uh, judging. Uh, I mean, a judge, angry judge. And then New Testament, he changed. He become a loving father. No, no. He's the same in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. So wait till you you come and attend my course on seven principles of Bible interpretation. Okay. I can use scripture to explain to you everything is about his love. There are seven principal pillars of faith in God's love. Okay? And the devil cannot kill, steal, and destroy. Cannot touch you unless one of the pillars of faith is broken. He cannot touch you. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. Okay? Some people they read the Bible cover to cover a hundred times. But they don't even know what are the pillars of faith. What are the pillars of faith about His love? They don't know. They can read the Bible cover to cover a hundred times and they still think that God is an angry judge. No point. Okay? So, continue to sit tight. I'm going to explain to you what are the seven pillars of faith in God's love. And the enemy, the defeated enemy, Cannot kill, steal, or destroy unless one of the pillars is broken. Okay? So how how do you how do you uh, uh, let's say your pillar is broken, already broken, and, and there's some open doors and the devil is attacking, then how you how do you how do you strengthen the pillar? How do you restore the pillar? Very simple. You just take the pillar of faith. And you praise God and thank God and and praise God and thank God for the pillar, and that is how you strengthen, how you strengthen this pillar, how you restore back this pillar of faith in God's love. Okay, so you can use the seven pillars to praise Him and thank Him, and your pillars are strengthened. Okay, you understand. So this is what we do, ministering to the Lord. In the past, in the uh, reason, it reason past, here. Uh, you can see me here, and uh, uh, when people ask us what we are doing, what are you doing here? We will say, well, we are doing dance exercise. Dance exercise. We are not having a church service. We are doing dance exercise. Okay. So, whoever is keen to join us, just uh, you can WhatsApp me, text me. Okay. And then this is uh, just now that one is Queenstown. This one is Jurong uh, Jurong Gard Jurong Lake uh, Jurong Garden. Yeah. You 
Okay. So we have been, when you worship at a, a spe specific place, at least twice or three times, that place become a portal. Just like uh, Abraham, he set up an uh, a altar at this uh, Bethel. Okay, he set up an altar at Bethel. And then many, many years later, Jacob went there, he took a piece of stone from the altar to become his pillow. And then he dreamed of angels ascend and descend. Okay, so likewise, when we worship here, outdoor worship two or three times, this place become a heavenly portal. Angels will ascend and descend. And then this ground will become an easy ground for gospel to be rich to the, to, to the inhabitants of this area. Okay, if you stand here, if you come to this place at Jurong uh, Lake, and then your spirit your spirit man, if your spirit man is very sensitive, you can sense that this place is an open heaven. Okay, you can just, your spirit can just sense around. Okay, there's no distance in your, in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, there's no distance. Your spirit can sense the, 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 the area around you. Okay, or what you can see, your spirit can scan. And you can sense that, that this place is an open heaven. Okay. So you, let's talk about the first way to minister to him with the word. Okay, you can read the Bible first. You can read the Bible line by line, preferably the New Testament. The, you should we should all read the New Testament uh, more frequent than the Old Testament because New Testament is is revealing the kingdom, how to uh, about the kingdom, how to bring the he kingdom of heaven operating in the kingdom, uh, 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 like Jesus imitate Jesus in everything he does. Okay, it's about the kingdom. Okay, and the episodes is talking about explaining what Jesus is talking about. Okay, about the kingdom. Everything is about the kingdom, about Yeshua, about the good news, how to bring heaven on earth now. Okay, operating the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, so, so New Testament is more revel relevant to us. So we need to understand the, 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 the New Testament more times, I read more times to understand it than the old. The old is always talking about shadow and, 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 and metaphor about a coming kingdom, about a coming kingdom, a coming Messiah. Many, many shadows and types and shadows of Jesus in the Old Testament. But the New Testament is a real thing. So we need to read the New Testament more, more times. And as you read, you talk to Jesus. Thank you for this promise. Thank you for this uh, 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 promise. You, every promise of you is yes and amen. And it shall come to pass in my life. You say out. Don't just read. Say to him and thank him. There, there should be two-way communication. Two-way communication. Not just you. he talk to you through the Logos. Not just he talk to you through the Logos. One way. Intimacy means two way. You want the presence of Jesus to appear, you must have intimacy. That means two way. Two way communication. You must thank him. Okay? You don't need to talk so much. You just thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus, for this promise. Thank you for that promise. You are so awesome. Very simple word, but you speak from your heart. From your heart of gratitude. Speak with gratitude. Not just say, but with gratitude. If the words is saying, if Jesus is saying, or, or, or the word, the New Testament, the epistle, or saying something that you, you are not doing, you, you have not been doing it, you, you have not been obeying it, so you should confess and repent to him, Jesus, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I, I should not have done that. You must say out, okay, as though he is inside you. He is inside you. He is living inside you. He can hear you, okay? He can hear you and say you're sorry, okay? You say you're sorry. And then what happened? You may start to burp, cough, or vomit. There, there, will, be inst there will be deliverance, okay? There will be deliverance, okay? And and when you talk and talk about an hour, or maybe a bit more, depending on you, depending on whether whether you are distracted or not. Okay, if you are not distracted, it's around one hour. Suddenly, the presence of Jesus appeared 
next to you. Okay? Next to you. Not inside you. Next to you. Okay? And you can feel Him. Your spirit man can feel Him. Okay? And, and it's, it's the, the feeling of the presence is so wonderful. Okay? It's so wonderful. You, you, you know somebody is standing next to you. And it cannot be evil spirit. It cannot be familiar spirit. Okay? Because you are reading the Word of God. You are reading the God, Word of God and, and talking to Jesus based on the Word. The, the devil cannot imitate Jesus and stand next to you. You understand? The Word and the Spirit must come hand in hand. You always start with the Word. Okay? The Word. Okay? You talk to Jesus with the Word. Thank Him and repent. Okay? And the presence will appear next to you after one hour. Okay? I, where, where did I learn this from? I learned it from this Benny Hinn book. He has a book called Good Morning Holy Spirit. Before he fell, uh, before he fell, uh, he, he has this bestseller book, Good Morning Holy Spirit. And that's what he do. He read the Bible, talk to Jesus, read the Bible, talk to up uh, for at least an hour or maybe more. And the presence of Jesus will appear next to him. And then he will go to the, the, to the auditorium where people are waiting for him. And he will not look at the, the, uh, all the images on the left or the right. He will not see newspaper. He will just walk straight to the auditorium and then the presence of Jesus will follow him into the auditorium. And then after that, he will do his healing, he, uh, healing service. That's how he, he operate. Okay? The presence, the presence through ministering to, the, to, the, to Jesus with the word, with his word. Okay, and that is what in the Old Testament, the Levites, some of them, they take the Torah and then they read and then they talk to, to, the, talk to uh, the presence of, of God in front of the ark. And when they talk, they talk and then new revelation come to them and then they write down, write down and then it become part of the Psalms, the book of Psalms. Okay. They minister to a lot with the Torah. Okay? So it is biblical. Ministering to a lot with the word is, is biblical. Okay? You, you, take, you read the word and then you paraphrase the word for yourself. Okay? Whether it's for yourself or for, for your family, you can paraphrase. You don't recite word for word. Okay? You, when you paraphrase the word, it enters your heart. It enter your heart. Okay? You, if you memorize scripture, it is different. It is different. You are using your mind. But when you paraphrase it to yourself, to your circumstances, you, the word has to enter your heart. And then, it, and then you regurgitate the word and, speak, uh, and talk to, to Jesus about what the word is saying and thanking him. Okay? It, it is powerful. Okay? It is powerful. That means you really believe. You are, you are releasing faith in His Word. You are releasing faith in His Word because you speak back to Him and thank Him with gratitude. Okay? So the presence, the presence will come after an hour. Okay? This is called ministering to a Lord with the Word. This is what you can do. You have something to, to speak to. Speak about to Jesus. So you don't know, you don't suddenly don't know what to say. You don't know what to talk. If you pray uh, normal prayer, normal prayer, you suddenly run out of words. But if you minister to a Lord with the word, minister to Him with the word, you can, you can do it for an hour or, or two hours or three hours. You can. Okay. So every time you, you repent because the word says something you never do, you are shutting door to the enemy. Correct? The second one is dancing in the spirit, flagging in the spirit. Okay? So you, when we 
dance in the spirit outdoor, we are exercising our communion. Our human spirit has got this part called communion that can sense the anointing upon. Upon. Many a times I operate on the anointing upon. Okay. Sometimes I operate on the anointing inside. Okay. You can. You can switch. If you believe the word, okay, in your mind, then your, your mind is part of your soul. Then your soul and your spirit can, can work together hand in hand. You have a, you are, if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you have the anointing upon. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is to give you the power the, the, of the Holy Spirit upon. Okay? Your spirit, you can communicate, you can connect to the spirit upon. Okay? And so when we are dancing in the spirit, we are, I'm trying to be conscious, my mind is trying to be conscious of the Holy Spirit upon. And I move my flex spontaneously. Intuitively, just like you pray in tongues, intuitively or spontaneously, you pray in tongues. You don't think what to say. Okay, so likewise, when we uh, dance in the spirit, we we do that also. It must be intuitive. Okay, and you are trying to sense the Holy Spirit moving you. Okay, and you ask Holy Spirit come and lead me to dance in the spirit, and 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 sometimes after an hour. Sometimes I felt the Holy Spirit moving my hand gently to, to, to move the pattern, to move the, 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 my, my, my flag in the pattern that He wants. And I know that it's, it's not evil spirit, it's the Holy Spirit because I know that I can resist. If it's, if it's evil spirit, you cannot resist. You cannot control yourself. But if it's Holy Spirit, you, you know that you can resist. You can, fo you can don't follow His, his uh, leading. Okay, you can you can tell. Okay, so when you follow his leading, you find that it's like effortless, weightless, weightless. There's you don't there's no weight at all, and then you enjoy it. Okay, and those people who are standing beside you can feel the anointing upon you. Serious, they can feel they can sense an, the anointing upon you when you flag, because you are flagging in the spirit. You are dancing in the spirit with the flag. Okay. The next one is singing in tongues. Singing in the spirit. Okay, or you can you can play some Christian music and then you sing new songs, new lyrics spontaneously to the Lord to to Jesus. Okay? And that will bring the presence also, the glory or presence. The person of Jesus will manifest. Like I said, the anointing and the and the presence is different, okay? It's different. Numbers eleven chapter Numbers chapter eleven talk about about the bread. God, the Lord came down, and then He took the spirit upon Moses and gave it to the to the seventy two elders, and then they start to prophesy. So the Lord came down. That is the presence of of Jesus came down, talk to Moses face to face. And, 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 and Jesus took the anointing, the Holy Spirit upon Moses. That is the anointing. The anointing is like a substance of the Holy Spirit upon, upon you and me. Presence is the person of Jesus standing face to face with you. Okay, so we want the presence more than the anointing. When you have presence, you sure have anointing. When you have presence, you sure have anointing. Okay. Anointing doesn't mean you have the presence. You are anointed doesn't mean you have the presence. It's different. Okay? So, a pre presence, you need to have intimacy, word, and spirit. Three things. Word, spirit, and intimacy. Okay? Like when we are dancing with the flex, with the flex, I tell Jesus, I want to dance with you, Jesus. Please, let me dance with you. Come. Let your presence come. Okay, and then I really dance. I believe by faith. Ask and it shall be given, and then I I will start to flag dance with my flag. Okay, ask and it shall be given. Jesus said. Okay, and the presence of Jesus will literally manifest in the outdoor worship. Okay. How how do you know the presence really appeared? Your spirit. Spiritual senses can sense. If you are a sensor, you can sense. 
his presence. Okay, if if you are a seer, S E E R S E E R, you can see him appear in front of, in in our in the midst. Okay, some of us when we dance dance outdoor, some of us are seer, some of us are sensor. Okay. So so. So, so when you see him or you sense him, or sometimes I see fire come down from heaven. Okay, I I see a few times fire come down from heaven. That means healing miracles is going to happen. Healing miracles is going to happen. Okay. So 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 that's how we should operate. Okay, we sh we Christians are supposed to be supernatural beings. If if you are not supernatural, something is very wrong. We are supposed to be supernatural being. We should be naturally supernatural. Okay, we su should be naturally supernatural. Okay, if you understand all that I'm saying, faith, anointing, and presence. Okay, you, you, we can be naturally supernatural if you understand this tree how it works. Okay. So the third one is ministering to the Lord with the seven pillars of faith in his love the whole bible contains only seven pillars okay it's revealing the love of god for us through jesus the entire bible okay if you can discover the eight pillar please please text me let me learn from you okay i want to learn more if there's an eight pillar i cannot afford to miss it i cannot afford to miss every pillar of faith is very very precious to me faith of in his love Faith in His love. Every pillar is so precious to me. Okay, I hope you have the same mentality as me. Okay, every pillar of faith in God's love is super precious. I will cherish it. I will love it. I will guard it with, you know, with my heart. Okay, forever and ever. Okay. So you must understand the whole, the reason why we live in this world. Of trials, temptations is to prepare us to live in heaven forever with Jesus. Okay, that's why we have these seven pillars of faith in His love. We are, will be tested and tested whether we, uh, we the the so that the pillars of faith become strong. Okay, and str so that we we will be ready to live in heaven. Okay, if the pillars are not strong, are weak, and it breaks. Okay. Another test will come. Another test will come. You understand? God brought Jesus, the Holy Spirit in Matthew chapter 4, brought Jesus into the wilderness to be tested by Satan. Yes. Jesus was brought to the wilderness to be tested by Satan. Matthew chapter 4. Okay. If Jesus has to be tested, you and me will be tested. Hebrew chapter 3, the children of Israel was tested in the wilderness 40 years. Okay, actually it's not for, supposed to be 40 years, it's supposed to be 40 days. It takes only 40 days to cross the wilderness to enter the promised land. But they, they stuck in the wilderness for 40 years and they were tested and tested. Keep on test, retest, retest, retest. Okay, because the pillars are broken. Okay. So remember this, okay? This is very important, okay? We must become tabernacle, David. We must be always thanking and praising, you know, like like like, like this, like this. Second Chronicles thirty one two, okay? After after Hezekiah set up the tabernacle, David, his 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 kingdom become powerful, very very powerful, okay? Because the glory of God will surround the whole kingdom and protect Israel. Okay? Protect the kingdom. Okay? So, so there are, se what are the seven pillars? Seven pillars. Okay? So the seven pillars here, okay, you see the number one, number two, number three. Okay? And, and then, uh, first one, ministering to the Lord with Faith and love, rebuilding the tabernacle of David. And then the second one, 
means to the Lord with the reading the Bible, and third is prophetic dance, singing in the spirit. So this one, number one, there are seven pillars. There are seven pillars, and the first one is uh, God's character of pure goodness. Number two, the finished work of Jesus. Okay, the third one, we are the desire of His heart. He loves us. He's madly in love with us. Okay. He's madly in love with us. Jesus is madly in love with us. He's thinking about us day and night. He knows the number of hairs on your head and he wrote your name in the palm of his hand. Okay. And number four, he wants to manifest his power to help us. He is desperately wanting to show us his power. Desperate. But he needs our permission. He needs our permission. Okay. We, he cannot suka suka show off his power. You have to invite him because he has given us a free will. He has given us dominion over this world. He cannot suka suka show his power to save you. You must invite him and you must believe that he's very eager. Okay. Number four, pillar four. Okay. Pillar five, our identity in Christ. Okay. We are. Our identity in Christ, we are born of God. We are no more born of flesh and blood. We are born of God. We are spirit being. Okay? We are spirit being. Okay? This is our true identity. We are kings. We are priests. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. We are priests. We are kings. Okay? We are, when we are born again, you are no more a, hu a normal human. Your spirit is the real you, not your, your flesh and blood. Your flesh and blood is not you. You have to switch your mindset. Okay? If you are you are, you are not sure, not sure about this, finish. You get attacked by the enemy. Your true identity is your spirit. You are born again. All things have become new. Your past of, of shame or mistakes never happened. Never. It happened to your old man. But not to your new man. Your new man, your old man is your old spirit man, not your body. Your new man is your new spirit, your new creation. All things has become new. Okay, you must get this right, because when I later on I'm going to teach about inner healing. Okay, you understand why this pillar five is so so important. Okay, our true identity is our spirit. We are seated in third heaven at the same time. We are here in this room. We are in two places at the same time, and Jesus is also in third heaven, and He is also inside us at the same time. Okay, and then pillar six, the name of God. Pillars, the names of God. Now, if you pray the name of God, now if you know how to pray the name of God, now you take the effort to go and understand every name of God, now, and then you pray up, speak to Him, thank Him, thank Him for this name, thank Him for that name, praise Him for this name. There are so many names. If you can make an effort, you know, you know what, you will go, you will ascend into a, a higher level of presence or glory. The presence of Jesus will appear. And another level of presence. Okay. Pillar 7, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, I will talk about this later on. Uh, okay. The fruit of the Spirit is actually belong to the Holy Spirit, but it is inside us. Okay. It's inside us. Many people have got the wrong understanding. Okay. Let me, let me, uh, then number two ministering to the Lord with the word okay you read the Bible you talk to Jesus you must you need to know the seven principles of Bible interpretation okay if not you cannot obey you cannot obey you cannot obey his word if you don't understand for example Jesus said if if you're uh, you want to follow me you want to, to uh, 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 become my disciple you must hate your family you must hate your children. You must hate your spouse. You must hate your spouse, no? Jesus said that, no? No, that is not truly what he meant. That is a hyperbole. Hyperbole principle number one. Hyperbole means Jesus exaggerated the 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 the, the over exaggerated what, what the, the the meaning of what he wants to tell you. He it means that you must love Jesus much, much more than you love your spouse, much, much more than you love your children. If not, you cannot be my disciple. This, this is called hyperbole. He exaggerated the importance of loving 
Jesus more than your, your children, your spouse. Otherwise, you cannot be his disciple. Okay? And Jesus said, another hyperbole you will know is if your eyes cause you to sin, you pluck it out. That means he's telling you, you must guard what your eyes seeing. You must guard what your eyes see at any cost. At any cost. As though you need to pluck it out. Okay? That is also a hyperbole. So there are, there are many hyperbole in the way that Jesus teach. Okay? So there are seven principles altogether. If you don't understand, then you cannot obey. You cannot. You need to obey, then your house will be built on a rock and not on sand. Okay? Literally, you have to obey. Okay? But you cannot obey unless you know the seven principles. Okay? So which I'm going to teach in the future, in the near future. I hope you'll be around to listen. Okay, and 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 this is one of the way to enter His presence. Okay, read and talk to Jesus. Read and talk to Jesus. The presence of Jesus will come. Okay, that is number two. So you you have to understand the devil cannot kill, steal, and destroy unless one of the pillar of faith is broken because he's defeated. He is defeated. It's only a fight of faith. There's nothing to fight. He is defeated. You are just to enforce victory. As kings, as priests, and, and priests, you enforce uh, victory by first becoming a priest. You minister to the Lord. You minister to the Lord as priest. And the presence of Jesus will appear. And then you exercise your authority as king. And you command, you make decree to enforce the victory. Okay, there's nothing to fight. You enforce victory by commanding when the presence of Yeshua is here because you minister to him as a priest. Okay, that's what you are supposed to do. Okay, you must have the right understanding. Okay, seven pillars of faith. Okay, and in fact, if your seven pillars of faith is so strong, you don't need to be tested in this world anymore. You will be raptured. You can be raptured to heaven directly. Because like Enoch and Elijah, they were raptured because of faith. Because of faith. Just because of faith. Not because they do a lot of good work. Okay. Elijah makes some Elijah wasn't very uh, uh courageous. Okay. He was he was not uh obeying many things that God told him to do. He was he was having a lot of fear. Okay. He was running away from uh, Queen Jezebel. Okay. He Many things that he asked, God asked him to do, he didn't do. Elisha, God has to raise up Elisha to do it. But he was raptured because of faith. Okay? According to Hebrew chapter 11 verse 5. So, it, it's all about faith. So, I want to emphasize to you these seven pillars of faith. Okay? Once you're, when, you when you can actually strengthen the seven pillars of faith by praising God, thanking Him, for many hours and you won't run out of words to say because you have seven pillars to talk about you can just go into it one one at a time and 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 extrapolate them extrapolate them and thank him and praise him okay and that's what you call ministering to a lot you are you are releasing faith and you are praising and strengthening your seven pillars and the glory and the presence of yeshua will appear okay So the children of Israel was tested. They, they have, they don't, they don't believe. They don't believe that God brought them out to be a special people, chosen people. They don't believe, and they go into, uh, they murmur against God. Okay, they murmur against God, and they were destroyed by destroyer. They don't believe they are, uh, 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 everyone is chosen to be priests. Okay, Moses told them. God told Moses to tell them. Everyone, I want everyone of you to be priests, okay. But they don't want there. You see, De Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 for you are a chosen people, okay. The whole nation, okay, a special treasure above all the people, but they have no faith. Right now, today, you and me are the same. We are all priests, 
we are all priests and we are all kings but many of us don't believe okay and they and they act like 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 uh uh they don't believe and they act like 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 uh, what I call that uh uh they have this like this ch children of Israel okay why god why why you let me suffer why you let this thing happen to me why you have let this thing happen to me how how come they are murmuring against god they are murmuring against god they don't believe you are actually priests and kings okay they murmur against god and then they open door to the destroyer okay so in my next few teachings uh, on the deliverance uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about the destroyer and i'm going to uh, do some repentance for everybody and then we're going to command the destroyer to get up from your life okay so many many deliverance ministry don't know about this destroyer which comes from murmuring and complaining against god there are some christian uh, they will say oh i'm very close to god i always complain to him oh he always listened to my complaint you always listen to my murmuring and and then they wonder why they cannot attack by the devil okay they got a spiritual spiritual attack every day and then they and then they thought that then then they complain to god why you let this thing happen why uh, uh, they murmur and murmur and then the devil attack and attack they are in the in the in the loop and they do not know why okay okay so we're going to do some deliverance and cleansing for that in our topic on inner healing okay So, so every one of the Israelites are supposed to be uh, a kingdom of priests, okay? But they don't believe. They, they don't believe and, and they... Uh, 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 they go and call for Aaron to build a calf, golden calf, okay? And then after that, Moses came and asked, why, who are the people on God's side? Come to this side. The children of Israel, only the Levites come to this side. Only the Levites, the tribe of Levi, came to, to Moses' side. The rest of them want to stick to their golden calf. So end up, only the, the tribe of Levite become a, 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 a priest. Okay, But actually, God wants everyone to be priests. Just like now. Okay, All of you are priests. We are all priests. Okay. So it's all about faith, okay? There, there are seven pillars of faith in God's love, okay? We, we, we must believe that He loves us and we must love Him with all our mind, soul, uh, and heart, okay? Oops, something wrong with my, my slide. Okay? Believe that He, he loves us okay through the seven pillars of faith okay and we love him back with heart soul and mind a two-way love two-way love okay faith that he loves us okay he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him okay so the first pillar what is the first pillar the first pillar is his character okay when you come to god you must believe that his character the pillar of faith, okay? You must believe that He's very rich in mercy. Exodus 34, verse 6, okay? Exodus 34, verse 6. He is very, very merciful. He is very, very merciful. He is steadfast in His love. He's, he is he's rich in mercy. He always forgive and forgive and forgive, okay? He's not an angry judge. He's very merciful. The minute you, you repent, he run, he uh he will run to you not 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 you run to him he run to you like the prodigal son uh, the father was looking in the horizon for him to come back once he turned back uh, he came only uh, the father run to the son okay no no not waiting from far and then holding a cane no he ran to the fun to the son and clothe him with the uh, uh, uh rope a new rope rope of righteousness and then the son a ring uh, to show his sonship okay god is like that god is very very merciful okay and god is very very gracious more gracious than you believe he always give us good things that we don't deserve he's very abundant in his grace grace means unmerited favor 
Okay, he is very slow to anger. Okay, he always patient with us. But of course, God will chastise us. Okay, Hebrew chapter twelve, I think it's verse six. God, which father do not chastise his children? God, if we don't repent, God can chastise us. Okay. God is slow to anger. Okay. God is God is abounding in faithfulness and goodness and love, steadfast in love. Okay. He is very, very faithful to answer your prayer. And he's very, very generous. Okay. This word generous, very generous, I add. I add in myself. Okay. I think the Exodus 34 6, you go and look at all the different different versions. It's not there. But I in my experience, God is super generous. He like 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 you like he always uh uh give you more than enough. Like the one that, that uh, Mary asked Jesus, hey the wine not enough. The wine not enough. So Jesus turned the water into wine. And he, he don't just make one jug for he make many jug excess and and this why is not a need why is not a need it's a one w a n t one God is very very generous to his children okay the problem is we don't believe the bottleneck is we don't believe that God is very very, very generous and, and that blocks him from releasing his generosity it, our it is not on God's side. It's our side. We are the bottleneck. We are not sure that that He's very generous. We are not sure. We are dark. We are we are we are, we are maybe doubtful, you know, because we have experience with our earthly father. Okay, we thought His God is also like that, but actually God is very very generous. Uh, God is very very merciful, very very gracious. Unmerited favor. That means He want to give you things that you don't deserve. He's very generous to give you things that you don't deserve. Okay? And He's very, very faithful to hear and answer your prayer now. Instant. The problem is we don't believe. We don't have, we have hesitation. We have hesitation. We are not sure. You have to be very sure. Not sure means you are the second kind of soil. Mark chapter 4, Matthew 13, the second kind of soil. You're not sure. You have to be very sure. And how are you to be very sure? You praise God. God, you're very, very faithful to hear my prayer. You are always faithful. Answer my prayer beyond what I can ask or imagine. You are, you are, you are my faithful prayer answering God. You talk to Him like that. You minister to a lot. You say, you are my faithful prayer answering God. You're always faithful. Everything I ask, you will do it because you are faithful to hear, hear my voice. You are such a good father. You are such a good father. Okay, you convince when you praise and praise and praise, you will believe. You will believe. Okay, you are God. Don't need you to convince him. It is our unbelief that blocks our answered prayer. Our answered prayer now, instant answered prayer. Okay, it is us, not God. Okay, you're not sure that God is very very generous. You're doubtful because you you, you don't have such experience before. So you convince yourself, God, you're so generous. You always give more than enough. You, you own everything in this world. And you love to, to astonish your little children with, with your generosity. You love to give and give because you're a good father. So generous. Come and astonish me with your generosity. Come and astonish me with the provision. Come and, and, come and invade my life. You give permission. You give permission to God to invade your life. You must in give permission. You cannot. You don't give. He cannot come in. He cannot come in. He cannot go against His word. Okay. You you praise Him. You thank Him. You God, you're ger so generous. Come, come and show off your generosity in my life. You give Him permission to show off His generosity. Okay. This is how you're supposed to pray. This is called ministering to the Lord. Praising and thanking. This is called high praises. If you are financially in trouble, then you should do this kind of praying. Praising and thanking in advance. I thank you in advance. You're going to astonish me with, with overflowing financial blessings because you are a generous father and I'm your little children. You humble yourself. I'm your little children. 
I cannot do anything without you. You are my source. You are my provider. You are, you are Jehovah Jireh, my generous provider. You say, you, you praise Him with all these words to convince yourself, not to convince God. Okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, this, this little child come to the mother. Hey, mother, how come my, my neighbor, uh, the little, ch uh, little boy, uh, he, the mother bought a bicycle for him? How come you never buy a bicycle for me? Are you sure you're my mother? How come you're so stingy? How come you never give me a bicycle? Huh? Why are you so stingy? You know what? What The mother will become very sad. Correct or not? But the boy said, Hey, uh, mother, I thank you in advance. You're going to bless me with, with the best bicycle because you're very generous. I always... Love your, I love you because you're full of goodness. You're full of generosity. You always give me good things that, that astonish me and surprise me. I'm so happy to have you as my mother. For you're so generous. You know what happened? The mother will run, immediately run outside, the shop, go to the shop and buy the most expensive, the best bicycle for the child. You understand? Correct or not? You agree or not? This is the way that we should all pray. Okay? This is the correct way to minister to a Lord. You praise Him and thank Him. If you think that you are, you, your, 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 your pillar is very weak, you don't, you don't have much faith that God is generous, then you praise Him more on that pillar, on that generosity part. Or you're, you're not sure that God is very gracious, that He will be... Uh, uh, give you all the good things uh, uh, because grace means unmerited favor okay you're not sure about that then you praise him and praise him for that to strengthen your pillar you minister to a lot you praise and thank him praise and thank him for that pillar for that part of the character god's character okay you think that he's he's you're not sure you're very weak you think he's he, you don't understand how can God be so merciful or God can be so gracious. How can we be so faithful to hear your prayer? You praise and praise and thank Him until you believe. Okay? This is called ministering to the Lord. So if you, if you have this, this, uh, if you can uh, 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 understand this, okay, you can understand this, this seven pillar, okay, this seven pillar, okay, you can talk to God for hours. Pillar one alone, you can talk to God, talk, praise Him, thank Him. At least 15, 20 minutes, depending on your read, how much you read the Bible, how much you know about His the Bible, about His about Him. You can actually extrapolate them. Talk to Him. Okay? Talk to Him. Thank Him for each of the character to strengthen your pillar. Okay? You understand? Pillar 1. So many things to thank. Okay? Correct or not? Pillar 2. Now, Pillar 2 is the most powerful. Okay? The most powerful. Okay? Now, let's read about this. Let's read about this Old Testament. Everything in the Old Testament is a shadow for the New Testament. So you, you got uh, some people they read Leviticus. Ah, oh, so boring. I don't understand sin offering, burnt offering. All these don't apply to me. They are they don't apply to me. It's over already. Why 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 I want to read for what? No 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 no. There's something you can learn. There's a revelation here you can learn. Okay, Jesus is our sin offering, burnt offering, and our peace offering. Okay, when you minister to a lot and you thank him jesus you are my sin offering you are my burnt offering you're my peace offering okay the glory of the lord will appear okay the glory of the lord the presence of jesus will appear okay the glory and the presence is the same the presence of jesus will appear okay when you give thanks for for what jesus has done for you he is our sin offering burnt offering our peace offering so we're going to read some scripture to explain why Jesus is our sin offering, 
why Jesus is our burnt offering and our peace offering. There's no need to memorize all this scripture. Okay, you, you must ha have understanding. Okay, you must be the fourth kind of soil. Okay, you must understand. And then you use your own word. You paraphrase it to yourself. And thank Jesus. Okay, you don't, no, no, don't need to quote or memorize scripture. You must understand why Jesus is your sin offering, burnt offering, and peace of offering. And then you, you, you just thank Him and praise Him. Okay, and the glory will appear. Okay, the presence of Yeshua will appear. Okay. And in, in the Hebrew chapter 10, verse 19, it says that we enter the holiest by the blood of Yeshua. It's the same thing. Leviticus chapter 9, 22 to 24, and Hebrew 10, it's the same thing. You enter the holiest by the blood of Yeshua. When you, when you thank Him, for, Jesus is our sin offering, burnt offering, peace offering, you are actually entering by the blood of Jesus. Okay? You are entering the, the holy of holy. Okay, the presence of Jesus will manifest. Okay. So this chapter 9 is a shadow for us to learn. Okay, how he do it is how we should do it. That we, we take Yeshua as our burnt offering, sin offering, and peace offering. And thank Je and thank and thank give thanks for them. Okay. Give thanks for Yeshua. Okay. So so this is the first step. This is the first step. Okay. So pillar number two is talking about the atonement scriptures. The atonement scriptures are the finished work of Jesus, the power of his blood. That the atonement scriptures are the most powerful scripture in the whole Bible. The whole Bible. You cannot if you don't like to memorize scripture, okay, you cannot afford not to memorize. I, I won't say memorize. Uh, I don't. I don't memorize scripture. I I understand the scripture. I I can tell you, uh uh uh, uh you know the scripture. What what it means. Uh, Isaiah fifty three verse five. He was bruised. Isaiah fifty three verse five. He was bruised for our iniquity, wounded for our transgression. Okay, I can tell you that. But I I I am just quoting you from what I know. The scripture says. I don't quote word by word. If I quote word by word, it's from my mind. But I quote from my heart because I know the meaning. I just tell you the meaning. Okay? So the finished word of Jesus is what we need to know. Or oh, what are they? It is it is very, very precious. Okay? Every time you pray the, the, the finished word of Jesus, when you say out, you thank him, you 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 say to to, to God, you thank him for this uh uh atonement scripture, that atonement scripture, you paraphrase it, the, there's an earthquake. There will be an earthquake. In the spiritual realm, demons will flee, demons will bow, because you are actually literally splashing the blood of Jesus. You are literally splashing the blood of Jesus. You are, when you thank Him for this atonement scripture, you thank Him for that atonement scripture. You are splashing, releasing the power of His blood. You understand? There is a spiritual earthquake happening. Demons tremble. Okay, they are reminded of their defeat. 2,000 years ago. Okay? They all bow. Okay? So, when you say out all the, the finished work of Jesus, there is a healing taking place in your soul. Because all this, all this finished work of Jesus is telling you how much He loved us. His love will heal your wounds in your soul. Okay, he took all our curses, all our wound, physical, emotional, spiritual, and we are healed. Okay, you are when you are when you say out everything. Okay, don't miss out a single one. They are every atonement scripture is precious. It is powerful, the most powerful scripture in the whole Bible. You cannot afford to miss any one of them. Okay, anything that talk about the finished work, you need to know. Okay. The most, I think, among all the atonement scripture, the all the powerful scripture, the most powerful of the powerful, I would say is this. I would say is this scripture. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. He was rejected. Jesus was rejected, so that we can be accepted. That this is the most powerful of all the powerful powerful scripture. 
This is the most powerful. Jesus, although he's son of God, he is actually God himself came down to be rejected. He took our sins and gave us his righteousness because he was carrying our sin. God the Father, the presence of God the Father left Jesus. And then Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was forsaken. Although he's, he is God, he, he willing to be forsaken so that you and me can be accepted as family, as sons of God, as children of God. That, this, is, this is the most powerful, most healing scripture. We are becoming a family of God because of Jesus being rejected. This is the most powerful. I will, I will, I will, I will not, I will, I will not, uh, for I will thank him every day for the rest of my life. Even I, when I'm, one day I go go to heaven, raptured to heaven, I will thank him every day. Okay, if there is such a thing as day and night, I will thank him every, every now and then, for what he has done with gratitude, with humility. We have thanksgiving. I will say this to him. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jesus uh, was our burnt offering. Why, why Jesus was our burnt of offering? Jesus was forsaken. So that we can be accepted. That means totally destroyed. Burnt offering means the animal is burned into ashes. Burned into ashes. That is a metaphor to say that Jesus was rejected so that you and me can be accepted. Jesus was our burnt offering. Okay, I hope you can say now, say aloud, Jesus, you are indeed my burnt offering. Indeed, you are my burnt offering. Jesus, you were forsaken. You were forsaken so that I can be accepted. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. With gratitude, with humility, with thanksgiving, I thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 53 verse 5, He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him. By His stripes we are healed. Jesus is our peace offering. The word peace means shalom. Shalom means healing to the soul. Okay, and the body. Okay, Jesus was our peace offering. Jesus was our peace offering. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. The shalom, the chastisement means punishment. Peace means shalom. Shalom means healing, soul and body was upon him. By his stripe, 39 stripes, we are healed. Soul and body. The soul has to be healed first. Then the body gets healed. Okay. So Jesus is our peace offering. Okay. So every day, every now and then, when I want to minister to a lot, I always start with, with the the atonement scripture. I thank him for the atonement scripture. When I thank him for the atonement scripture, I can sense the the I'm splashing the blood of Jesus. Okay, the demonic ram, all the all the all the defeated enemy scram, run. Okay, tremble with fear. Okay, they cannot come near. When the presence of Jesus appeared uh, after one hour of ministering, the presence of Jesus is really the presence of Jesus. It cannot be familiar spirit. Cannot be. Because I have been thanking Him, praising Him for the finished work. That's why people who want to move in the spirit, they have to be careful. They have to operate by the word first. Then the spirit it cannot be spirit, spirit, everything spirit cannot, it's dangerous. Word comes first, then the spirit. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We thank him, Jesus. You are my burnt offering because of you were rejected so that I can be accepted. Jesus, you are my peace offering because the chastisement for my peace was upon you. By your stripes, I was healed. Okay, you ministered a lot with the word, with the word. Okay, you must have the word, the finished work, the the atonement scripture is the most powerful word. 
in the whole Bible or even in the whole universe, in the whole universe, the most powerful words, the scriptures or scriptures or words is the atonement scripture. Okay. 1 John 2.2 2. He himself is a probation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Jesus was our sin offering. He was our sin offering. Okay. You took say with me, Lord Jesus, not only you 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 took our sins, you are our sin offering, Jesus. You are our sin offering. You are the propitiation for the sins of the world. Not only for my sin only, but also for the whole world. For the whole world. That means everything, everything belongs to you. Everything now belongs to you. And you are also our peace offering, Jesus. Jesus, you are our peace offering. The chastisements, the punishment for our shalom, healing to the soul and the body was upon you. Thank you. Thank you. So we thank him. We thank him for this, thank him for that. Tabernacle. Uh, 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 we, as, as we thank him, we are actually entering the throne room the, through the blood of the Lamb. We are thanking him. With, we are ent when we thank him for the finished work of Jesus, we are actually entering his throne room, the Holy of Holy, through the blood of the Lamb. That is literally how you enter the throne room, okay, by the blood of the Lamb, by thanking Him, by believing His finished work and thank Him. The finished work is also a showing of how much He loves us, the depth and the height and the width of His love, okay. And when you when you love Him with heart, soul and mind, and you believe that He, he loves you heart, soul and mind, and then you thank Him, you were forsaken. You were forsaken so that I can be accepted. You are my burnt offering. You are my peace offering. You were the chastisement for my peace was upon you. You took thirty nine stripes. Every every stripe on your body is saying that you love me. Every stripe on your body is he to heal one disease. You are healing thirty nine types of disease. Thank you, thank you. Thank you with gratitude, with love. With love and gratitude. That is how how you minister to the Lord. How you minister to Jesus. And the presence will come. Okay? Will come. He's, he, as what Leviticus chapter 9 verse 22. The glory and the presence will come. Okay? Okay? So, so we don't shortchange ourselves. Okay? Every atonement scripture is important. Don't just, okay, one or two can already. Oh, he took our sin. No, there are more than that. More than that. Okay, more than that. Don't shortchange yourself. There are so many things he did. Okay, let's, let's, let's go through. Uh, now it's 10.03. Uh, okay. I think if I stop at 10.30, I don't know whether you'll be too tired or not. Uh, Okay, re re pillar number two, the atonement scripture is actually revelation of how great his love for, for you and me. How deep he loves you and me. How much God loves love you that he rather be forsaken so that you can be accepted. That will cause your soul, wounded soul, to be healed. Okay, you understand? Okay. Jesus was smitten with the wrath of God, Isaiah 53 verse 4, so that we can be delivered from the wrath that shall come upon the whole earth, 1 Thessalonians 1 10. And that is the seventh trumpet judgment, chapter 8, Revelation chapter 8. There's going to be the wrath of God, fire and brimstone, demonic locusts from the pit of hell coming upon the whole earth, and nobody escape unless you are raptured. Unless you are raptured. The whole earth will be subjected to the wrath of God, but you and me will be raptured. Okay? 
according to this uh, okay, according to this verse okay because Jesus was smitten Isaiah 53 verse 4 he was smitten by God he has paid enough he has paid enough he was smitten by the wrath of God because he was carrying our sin so that you and me will not be smitten with the wrath of God understand we will not be smitten with the wrath of God. We will be raptured. All because of Jesus. He was Jesus was smitten by God. According to, according to Isaiah 53 verse 4. This is very important. The reason why you and me will be raptured before the trumpet judgment is because of Jesus. He already paid for the, for, for the punishment already. The wrath of God. So that you and me no need to pay. You understand? Can you say together, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you were smitten by with the wrath of God. You were smitten with the wrath of God on my behalf. Thank you, Jesus, so that I will be delivered from the wrath to come, from the trumpet judgment. Thank you, Jesus. I will be delivered. I will be raptured. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What what other atonement scriptures? Second Corinthians five twenty one. We are having his righteousness. He becomes sin. Jesus becomes sin so that we become his righteousness. Our own righteousness is filthy wreck, but we have his righteousness. Okay, why not you say with me, Lord Jesus? I thank you that I have your righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. I have your righteousness. My own righteousness is filthy wreck. Thank you. I'm righteous because of what you did for me. What you did for me is enough. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that, Jesus, you, you were rejected. You were rejected so that I can be accepted. You have redeemed us. You have taken away our orphan spirit. Now we have the spirit of sonship. We have the spirit of sonship in us. We are sons and children of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you, you made the payment for the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus. You have reconciled all things to yourself. All things belong to you. Yes, even those non-believer, non-believer, even my family members who are not believer, they belong to you. The enemy has no legal right Say, say aloud, the enemy has no legal right upon my family members. They all belong to you through the blood, through your blood, Lord Jesus. All things belong to you. Even, the, even my family members, they belong to you. The enemy has no legal right. They must yield. They must let go. I command them to let go of my family members. The spirit of blindness, I command you to, to leave my family members in Jesus' mighty name. Okay. Now you must believe this. You must believe that everything belongs to Jesus. It's all about faith. If you don't believe, then Jesus cannot do anything. Jesus can appear to your to your non-believer mother or your children or your spouse instantly, like Saul to Paul. Instantly saw become poor. Instant conversion experience. Okay? If you believe, if you choose to believe, God can convert anyone instantly. The problem is we don't believe. The problem is us. Okay? We are the bottleneck, not God. You can you 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 can give permission. You can give permission. You can say, Come, my family members, my children, my spouse, come. Convert them. They belong to you through, through the blood of Jesus. Colossians one twenty. All things belong to Jesus. All things. Jesus already paid for the sins of the world. 1 John 2.2 2. Come. 
come and 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 show yourself to my 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 spouse, my loved one, my children. Let them know that Jesus is real. Convert them. Give them a saw to pour experience. Instant conversion. Come. I believe. I choose to believe. Because when I'm saved, my whole family is saved. Your word says that when I'm saved, my whole family is saved. Come, Lord Jesus. Touch them. Show them that you are real. Okay? The bottleneck is not God. It's us. Okay? So how? You praise God. You praise God and thank Him. Praise God until you yourself believe. And then miracle will happen. Okay? Everyone... God can give every one of us an instant saw to Paul experience or, or instant miracle. Can. Can. It provided you believe. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. Fight of faith. There's nothing to fight. How, how you fight the fight of faith? You praise God. Lo. You thank Him. Lo. That's how you fight. There's nothing else to fight. You understand? It's by praising and thanking Him. Okay? Isaiah 53 verse 10, Jesus was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. This is talking about bloodline cleansing, deliverance. When, we, when I come to the topic of deliverance, I will touch on this. Okay. We are all holy, blameless and beyond reproach at His throne of grace. Okay. So, so, so don't, say, don't, don't believe what, what some pastor, preacher will tell you. Hey, all of you are sinners. We're always a sinner. Don't. When you believe that you are always a sinner, contradict to this Colossians 122, then you cannot receive divine healing. You cannot receive divine healing because you believe wrongly. You are holy. Your ho holy, blameless and beyond is your spirit, not your not your soul. Your soul may need some some work in progress, but your spirit is very, very holy, blameless. Your spirit is you, okay? Not your soul. Your soul is a consciousness. Work in progress. You must understand this. You must cannot go against the word of God. Okay, if you go against the word of God, you are blocked from receiving divine healing. You are very, very holy. Okay, blameless, beyond reproach. Okay, you must understand your identity is your spirit, where the Holy Spirit lives. You are holy because of the Holy Spirit in you, and and you are clothed in His righteousness also. Okay, you are very, very holy. Okay. Can you say together, Jesus, I am very, very holy. Thank you. All because of you. Because of your spirit of sanctification inside me. I am now very, very holy. Thank you. Thank you. Lord Jesus, you, you bore my sicknesses, infirmities. By your strength, I was healed. Okay, I was healed. By the strap, we were healed. Okay, you took away, took over our sicknesses two thousand years ago. Now I can enforce your victory over sicknesses. Okay, okay, that is what it means here. Okay, this is this is what it means. Okay, it, your sick, whatever sickness you have is not lying symptoms. It is still it is real sickness, real symptom. Okay, it's not lying symptom. It is real. But the devil has no right, no legal right to give us sickness. We have to enforce victory. We command the, 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 the sickness to go, to live, and don't ever come back. Because Jesus bought 2,000 years ago. Okay, must have the right, correct understanding. Colossians 1.13, He delivered us from the power of darkness. Okay. What do you mean by he delivered us from power? Now, you, if some people they are born again Christian, okay, but they got a lot of demons inside them still haven't delivered, you know. Really, really, they believe they they, but because they never understand, they don't know about their spirit and the soul. They don't know the difference. Their soul is still being, uh, the, the soul is being captured, but their spirit is in the kingdom of God. They love God. They pray in tongues. They can hear God's voice, but they get spiritual attack every now and then on their soul. On their soul. You understand? They got they 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 they, uh, they hear voices. They hear they get attacked uh, here and there. They hear voices. They got they see shadows running around. 
but they are born again because they didn't go through the proper deliverance. But everyone, what, what do you mean by that? It means that every we are all delivered from the power of darkness. Your spirit is delivered from power of darkness, but the soul is work in progress. That means you're fighting from victory. You're fighting, you're doing, you're casting out the, the demons from a position of victory. You're standing in the kingdom of Christ. And then you are commanding demons to live. Okay? You are not you are not in the kingdom of darkness. You are standing in the kingdom of Christ and you commanding whatever spirit to, to let go, to leave you. You understand? If you believe that you are still a sinner, you cannot command the, the spirit to go. You have the wrong teaching and this wrong teaching is, a, is what you call a stronghold. A stronghold in your mind. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 10 verse 4 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5 talk about spiritual warfare is in the mind. It's all in the mind. You must capture every thoughts to the obedience of Christ. And and verse 4 talk about stronghold. That means wrong belief system. It is the wrong belief system that allow the enemy to attack. Okay? So if you don't get rid of the wrong belief system, the enemy cannot live. Okay? You have to you have to know the word. Okay, understand the word correctly. Okay, you are already delivered. And you're fighting from victory. From victory. You're not fighting for victory. You are already in the kingdom of God and 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 and, and uh, fighting against the defeated enemy. Okay. Wait wait till you watch my teaching on the deliverance and inner healing, you will understand better. Colossians 2 14 15. Every principalities and and evil spirit, every spiritual wickedness, uh all are defeated. Disarm ready. Colossians 2, 14, 15. They are, de they are toothless. All the enemy. Okay. So they, but people got a lot of fear. Why? Because somebody tell them, hey, you get attacked here, you can get attacked there, you know, you are uh, 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 very scary one. You know, you cannot suka -suka do spiritual warfare. Wait, you cannot backlash. There's a lot of fear. Fear will op open the door for the enemy to attack. Okay. Number one is fear. Okay, why, 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 why Job cannot attack? Because he has fear. Job chapter three verse twenty five. Job chapter three verse twenty five. What he feared the most, his Job says, "What I feared the most happened to me. What I feared the most happened to me." He feared that his his children will die, and all his children died. He feared that he lose all his wealth. He lose all his wealth. Okay, everything that he fear happens. He feared that he will get skin disease. He get skin disease. Fear is, oh, fear will open doors to attack. Okay. The principalities are defeated. They are toothless. Okay. So if you if you come and watch my later episode, my teaching series on deliverance, I will teach you seven doors to shut to the defeated enemies. Okay. Once you shut them, and you you can hear God's voice telling you, oh, there's one more, one more. You have you haven't shut yet. You haven't shut that. There's one more. You haven't shut that. And then uh, there are seven ways, right? So you un when you know the seven ways, uh, then the Holy Spirit will tell you ways number two, ways number three. You have, you have a soul tie with somebody you haven't break yet. You have a, 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 a cursed object in your home. You need to throw it away. The Holy Spirit will tell you. But you must be taught what are the seven ways. The, all the seven ways to shut the door to the enemy, to the def defeated enemy, it is in the Bible. It is in the Bible. Okay? So, so, so once, once you know the seven ways and you can hear God's voice because you practice soaking prayer. You practice soaking prayer. Okay, you, 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 you practice prophetic intercession. You can hear His voice clearly. Holy Spirit will tell you, hey, there's one more door you haven't shut. Okay. There's more one wound in your soul because of an event, a traumatic event happened 20 years ago. You have not healed this wound yet. And then the Holy Spirit will remind you. Okay. And then you, you apply the, the steps that I teach you to heal. So you do a one-time exercise to clear housekeeping, clear spring cleaning, okay, your, 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 your house, your temple. And then this defeated principalities, evil spirit cannot touch you. Right now. We are all new creation. All things become new, okay. Second Corinthians five seventeen. All things, ah, uh, there's another word which I 
I mean, I mean, this is a paraphrase. I'm, if you look at the exact scripture, all things become new. Okay. It means that you read the scripture before this verse. When Jesus died, you have died with him. When Jesus resurrect, you have resurrected with him. You are all new creation. Your spirit, not, not your, your, your soul, not your body. Your soul is part of your spirit. Okay? When your spirit born again, your soul, but your soul not born again. You, you still remember your old ways that need to be renewed. Okay? Your mind needs to be renewed. Okay? Then your soul will partner your spirit. But your spirit is you. It's the real you. New creation. All your, your past is gone. Old man has died. Your old man has died with Jesus. You read the scripture before. 2 Corinthians 5, uh, uh, 14, 15, 16. Verse 14, 15, 16. Uh, before this verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Before this verse, read verse 14, 15, 16. About your old man has died. You are a new man, new creation. All your past never happened. Never exists. All those pain and shame, all those... Never Okay, but you're still holding those thoughts in your mind. You need to, sometimes we do inner healing, we need to renounce them because they don't belong to you. It belongs to your old man. Your identity must come from the Word of God, not, not from your past belief. Okay? Galatians 3.13 Okay, why don't you say with me, Lord Jesus, thank you for making me a new creation. I'm a new creation. All my past shame and pain never happened. My identity, my self-esteem, my self-worth must come from the Word of God. No longer from my, from my, my, my childhood experiences. No longer from my childhood experiences because they never exist. Because my old man has died. I'm a new man, new creation. My identity must come from the Word of God. I think I better wrap up already. Uh, after this, I think I'll, I'll stop. Galatians 3.13, Jesus took every curse from us, okay? And, and, and give us the blessings of Abraham. Okay? Say, say with me, Lord Jesus, thank you that you became a curse. You took all my curses and blessed me with the blessings of Abraham. According to Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, I have the blessings of Abraham. What that means is, I am blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing to others around me and to the nation. And I intend to be a blessing to others. Thank you for making me a channel of blessings. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 and chapter 9 verse 8 these two talk about redemption from poverty Jesus already took our poverty okay if you don't believe that then I'm sorry you miss out okay Jesus not only died for your sin not only paid for your sickness he also paid to remove your our poverty okay we can never be poor because of what Jesus paid for okay and and why we don't get uh uh, redeemed from poverty because you don't know or you don't believe. Okay, so how? You praise God. You praise God that Jesus become poor. So that, according to Second Corinthians chapter eight verse nine, he became poor so, so that through to his poverty we can become rich financially, to do good works, not to splurge, but to do good works. We can become rich. We will become rich financially to good, do good works for the kingdom. So you have, you you don't shortchange yourself. Second Corinthians chapter eight verse nine. Jesus already took our poverty. You can never be poor because of the word. Okay, because of the word. Word must come first, then the spirit. Jesus already took all our poverty. Can you say together, thank you Jesus for taking away my poverty. You have taken, you have not only redeemed me from my sin, you redeemed me from my sicknesses, 
you also redeem me from poverty. You took away my poverty. It is impossible, Lord Jesus. It is impossible for me to be poor. It is impossible because you became poor. You became poor on my behalf. You took away my poverty. You became poor so that I will become rich financially and be enabled to do good works through the wealth. Not for my own pleasure, but to do good works. And I intend to do good works when I prosper financially. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, now you, all this atonement scripture, you can pray your own way. You thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Every time you thank Him, uh, you don't memorize. Uh, you don't copy what I say and then you say, you can rephrase it in your own words. When you rephrase it, you are saying from your heart. You are saying from your heart. And the word, all this word will enter your heart and bear fruits a thousandfold, a hundredfold. You understand? It must come from your heart. You don't, if you memorize what I wrote here and just recite what I say, you are using your mind. Mind and the heart is different. You want it to bear fruit, you must say from your heart. That means you must rephrase it, paraphrase it, and thank Him, and thank Him. And when you thank Him, thank Him, uh, and praise Him, uh, and show with gratitude, humility, and thanksgiving, uh, wow, the spiritual realm tremble, shake. Okay, The spirit of poverty run away. The spirit of uh, oppression, sickness, run. Okay, Because you are splashing the blood of Jesus. You are splashing the blood of Jesus. You understand? This is what I mean releasing the blood of Jesus. This is what I, what is really, really means by releasing the blood of Jesus. Not just, not say, I, 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 I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. No, this is what, what how you really re release the blood of Jesus. This is really how. Okay? How you release the blood of Jesus by thanking Him. Thank him with gratitude, with real gratitude from your heart. Thank you. Okay? And the, when you do that, okay, pillar one and pillar two, easily you can hit one hour. You can easily hit one hour of thanking, ministering to the Lord. The glory will come. The presence of Jesus will appear because you are, you are having intimacy. You are thanking him with, with gratitude from your heart and with love. So, okay, I think I will stop here. I will stop here. Sorry, I overshot the time. I, 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 I felt that I cannot stop right, because uh, 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 because um, st halfway through, then if I stop, then it's like uh, uh, not, s not very good. Right. So, uh, any questions so far? Any questions? Anybody want to ask me any questions? Uh, must, be must be related to what I teach. Right. Any, anyone? Anyone? Do you think that this is, is this kind of prayer ministering to the Lord is the most powerful, the most most powerful, because you are you, you are, are thanking Him with gratitude. You are having intimacy. You are having intimacy with Yeshua. You know, you're you're thanking Him. You think it's the most powerful, okay? What I do is usually I I mix when I spend time with. One with the with Yeshua, uh, I'm, when I'm praying in my secret place, I will sometimes I pray in tongues, sometimes I minister to a lot, sometimes I soak. Okay, I'm just waiting for Him to tell me things. I soak and wait. Maybe he, suddenly a thought will come to me. I know it's from Him and not from myself. Uh, then I maybe I write it down somewhere, and then after that I I minister to Him. Or sometimes I play my music and then I dance with my hand. Dance in my hand, dance in the spirit in my hands. It's a variety, you know. It's a variety of move, not not just strictly uh, praying in tongues one hour. Wow, to me it's quite uh, challenging, lah. Okay, so I have a variety of 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 praying, you know, prophetic intercession, soaking prayer, uh, ministering to a Lord with the seven pillars to strengthen my pillars to strengthen my pillars. Okay, so uh, it's a it's a, a variety of of uh, of a uh, way of of praying and it is and the presence i'm always sensitive to the presence i'm waiting for the presence i'm my spirit is connecting to him and when the presence come i know the presence here wow 
Wah, thank you, thank you, thank you, you know. I, I connect my pre- my spirit to his to his presence, you know. It's 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 some it's all all ha- it has to be a lifestyle. It cannot be a uh, 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 head knowledge. All that I teach, uh, okay. Although you 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 thank him and praise him, and then you 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 pray in tongues. It has to be a lifestyle. You have, you must live and operate in your spirit. You must be uh uh you must operate spirit so body your your soul must yield to your spirit what which part of your soul your the mind of your soul yielded to the spirit roman 8 5 you know and then you live in the spirit from your spirit every day of our life this is what uh we should be you know perpetually until the day we are raptured and, you know so okay uh i think i was Stop here and uh, stop. Uh, I will just ask. Uh, anyone got anything to share? Okay, I I will uh, allow you all to admit yourself. Uh, uh, okay. Is okay. You you can share testimony if you get get a healing miracles. You can give thanks or or, or if you got uh, any questions regarding what I taught just now. You can. Uh, us okay and and uh any new faces here uh you you can all go to my t.me uh uh telegram channel uh, t t i i just type here uh, uh timothy tang two zero one one okay the my telegram channel all my recordings powerpoint uh, uh all will be there powerpoints okay uh uh no questions? No questions? Pastor yes, yes, yes. Uh, where, where are you? you? You've got no camera? Yes, I on. Uh, I on my video already. Uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth Sim. Yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Pastor Timothy, like with yes. regard to these Ottoman scriptures, yes. is it can be connected with the, like we partake the Holy Communion? Mm and uh, thank thank the Lord for all that He has done, the finished work. How how is it with the Holy Communion? Well, Holy Communion is like thanking Him. Yeah, you can. You, I I don't know. You can want. To, wow, so very noisy. How come? How come so noisy? Yeah. Uh? uh, where the sound coming from? Uh? A lot of background noise. Uh. Yeah. You 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 you, you want to combine. Holy com usually holy com is separate la. but I mean usually holy com is a separate uh, uh, uh sacrament or, or 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 it's a separate process la. I mean I mean ministering to a lot with the p- seven pillars is 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 a different thing is ministering to a lot I think we we can keep it separate la. Okay. Okay, okay 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 any more questions any more questions No questions. Now, when you use these seven pillars uh, and praise him and thank him, in my experience, uh, I was in Korea Prayer Mountain. I was thanking him, praising as Jesus appeared in front of me. You know, the presence of Jesus can be many levels. Okay, it can be just you cannot see him, you feel he's there. Okay, many people are mostly like that. But I was in the Korea Prayer Mountain. I spent uh, like five hours praying every day for seven days, you know. Uh, and then on the third day, Jesus appeared in front of me. His eyes are uh, look at me, wow! Fire in his eyes, just like the the uh, book of Revelation. His eyes full of fire. You know the fire. When I look at his eyes, ah, uh, it's not scary kind of fire. It's it's love. It's a fiery love. It's like uh, uh burning love. It's it's like uh depths and depths of love. You know, and so when I look at his eyes, I he didn't say I'm Jesus. I, I just know it's Jesus. I just know, you know, I, I immediately I know it's Jesus. So much love. And then I was so, uh, uh, so I cannot, I cannot afford to blink my eyes. I look at him, wow, wow, you know, so, I was so excited, you know. Yeah. But after a while, I blink my eyes and then it's gone, you know. So, 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 when you please God 
Only faith can please God. So seven pillars of faith. There are more. Okay, there are more. You have listened only the the two pillars. There are more, more pillars coming. Okay, I think you'll be amazed, lah. Okay, if I go into the other pillar, uh, especially the last pillar. Okay, the seven, the number seven pillar. So I hope you you stick on and come and attend the the rest of the uh, next week. You know, next week about the rest of the pillar. And uh, yeah, I hope you practice this. And why why you need to do this? Because the presence is is the most important, especially in this end time. The world is very dangerous and dark. Only the presence can protect us. Okay, only the presence, not the anointing. Okay, the presence, the glory, the glory realm. Okay, so we 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 need to be tabernacle of David. We need to become tabernacle of David. If you are not tabernacle, of David, you need to become tabernacle of David. Then the glory will will surround you and your family like a bubble. Okay, a thousand will fall on the left, ten thousand on the right. No harm can come near you, literally no harm. Okay, because of the presence. Okay, that 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 is very very, that is a fact. That is a a proven fact. Not only the Bible, uh, but also in real life. You know the presence is, is all we need. Okay, okay, and the presence is tangible. Once once your once once you encounter the presence, you don't want anything less. It you, you don't want anything less than the presence. You want it more and more. Okay, you become so hungry for it. You don't want to uh, 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 stop. You want to have more of the presence. Okay. So I hope that will happen to you. Uh, uh, Pastor Timothy, can you upload the song videos in the Telegram chat so that we can sing and worship? Uh, okay. I probably will do that. Okay, okay. I think that's it. We we end. I I let me end with closing prayer. Uh, 